Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're talking about the honey badger. What? I was just saying, maybe I should look this Hey guys, how's it going? So here is the honey badger from the official queue. This is on loan to me right now from Shooting Surplus, who I can no longer link to with YouTube's new policies. But I'll link to him on Facebook, Instagram. I'll kind of figure out how best to navigate this whole YouTube fiasco. Uh, and maybe some commenter will link to it down below too. Who knows? Anyway, I've had this for a while now. People have been asking for a video review on it, but as most of my reviews, I don't just do unboxings and first impressions. I kind of do like I have actually used it for a bit. Granted, I haven't sent thousands and thousands of rounds through this or anything. It is uh, chambered in 300 blackout, uh, and that would get a little bit expensive for me. So yeah, I have a few hundred rounds through it. Uh, I've played with it a lot. I've kind of set it up. You can see how I would set this up normally. I'm just gonna talk to you a little bit about the features, what I like about it. I may bring it up here up close and personal so you can kind of get a uh, closer view of all the features as I'm talking about them. So it does have uh, QD slots on this side and the other side, that's what I have this sling in. This is a uh, Frank Proctor QD sling, very small, minimal sling. Put a Magpul QD M-Lock sling mount into the handrail. There is no sling mounts right now in the handguard. So if you want to use a QD option, you'll have to use one of these ones that uh, goes into your M-Lock. Other than that, let's kind of start from the back and move forward. So from the back, we kind of have this meat tenderizer type uh, buttstock. This is a buttstock, it's not a pistol brace though. I hear there is a pistol one in development right now. Uh, and I like, so let's back up. So the colors are kind of polarizing. I love, the look of this gun, but a lot of people kind of don't like it, maybe, so it's kind of open to interpretation. What we have here is a bunch of gray furniture. This is a gray mag and kind of a grayish type rail. This is 7075 aluminum anodized in no color. So this is just kind of the raw anodized color. Uh, so no pigments or anything like that. And that is what you're looking at. It's kind of a hodgepodge of colors, kind of reminds me somewhat to like the FDE scars that are kind of kind of the same color, but kind of different. This has, I think, some nice contrasting colors. So looks, if you're into it, cool, I am. 
there is some kind of like little other color features in here that add a little bit of pop. So here, anyways, yeah, the stock is a collapsible stock. There's two positions. It is closed and opened by this button on this side. So you push that in and you can close it, pull it, comes right out to maximum length. So that's kind of cool. Uh, there's pros and cons to if you want a couple other steps in between, but this one, how it's set up just is all the way collapsed or all the way out, extended. This is how you're probably gonna wanna shoot it for the most part, unless you're doing some type of CQB type work where you're up here. But this becomes kind of weird and unusable with the sights. It's kind of usable, but it's not the best setup collapse. But obviously, collapsing it makes it more transportable uh, and you can use it and pack it and store it in more places when you get this down really short. So with this collapsible stock, that means that you do have a proprietary upper and lower to allow for these rails basically to slide and collapse. The thing I really like about this though is that means it's very low profile. You don't have a bunch of width and bulk that you have on a lot of these collapsible type stocks. So you're still able to maintain a relatively low profile as far as this width goes while still having collapsible stock. Also, what that means though, is that you don't have standard stuff back here. It's kind of a proprietary spring and buffer system. Uh, so disassembly is a little bit different than normal. And also what that means is you're not gonna be able to put a different upper or lower on this. Some of the parts are compatible with your standard AR accessories like grip mags, mag release, triggers, safeties, all that stuff. But some of the stuff, rail, upper, lower, and buttstock are all proprietary to the Honey Badger system. What we have next is a matched Radian uh, ambidextrous charging handle. We have a ambi safety, I believe it's a 70 degrees, so let me go ahead and charge this. It is unloaded, so don't freak out too much, but the ambidextrous safety does work like this, obviously, on both sides. The trigger is an AR Gold two-stage trigger, so it has a little bit of a take-up, you'll see here, and then a very short, very crisp, very light break. So just like that, short reset as well. Most of your other components are pretty standard, your pins, your mag release, bolt catch, end release. Those are all pretty standard fare, uh, nothing super flashy in any of those. The ambidextrous controls are just the safety and the charging handle on this setup right now. So aside from the really sweet telescoping collapsible buttstock, another really nice feature is this gigantic flared mag well. So this will eat up mags no matter how you throw them at it. A lot more flared as you can probably tell than a lot of other flared type magwell. So that's really a nice addition that makes reloading a breeze. And moving forward, we have our M-Lock handguard. These do come in a couple different lengths. I believe there's a longer one uh, and a shorter one. They do have one that the suppressor can actually fit inside. This is the 16 inch barrel 300 blackout version. Uh, really, if I could choose any one, it would be the seven inch 300 blackout version uh, because I think that just makes more sense, a very small, short package. Uh, but they do offer a longer version like this. Obviously, the shorter version with the actual buttstock will require a tax stamp. So for getting a gun out to me for review, it's not really easy to get the seven inch out, so I have the 16. But if I were to go from the start, from the scratch and order one for myself, and I could have SBRs in my state and I was into that, I would definitely go for the seven inch version uh, because that's kind of in my mind where 300 blackout shines, especially suppressed. So the seven inch suppressed version of the 300 blackout, uh, the Honey Badger is five and a half pounds with the suppressor on, which is insane. This light, this 16 inch setup, I believe is five pounds, seven ounces. So with a seven inch suppressed, it's five pounds, six ounces. So this is a really, really light setup. That's kind of one of the first things I noticed when I picked it up was how light it was. So that's pretty awesome. Uh, here I have an M-Lock. Uh, BCM angled something, I forget what it's called exactly. And then I have the new Magpul aluminum scout mount, M-Block. So this allows your scout light or your Streamlight ProTac to get very up and close 
to the rail. So I was trying this guy out. I have it set up. Obviously I've shown this in other, other of my builds so I can access it over the top with my thumb and then it's out of the way. I like it here because it's over on this side, which means it doesn't obstruct much of my field of view. Again, guys, this gun is unloaded, camera's on a tripod, don't freak out. So that's how I like setting it up. So you could run a pressure pad or whatever, obviously. And then we have, this is the new Surefire uh, M300 Scout. This is the 500 lumen version in uh, FDE, obviously, which I thought just kind of went well with the overall look of the gun. Shooting Surplus does also sell these if you're looking for them. Uh, if you need a little more light output, obviously you could bump it up to the M600. Uh, like I said earlier, this mount also works for the Protax. It does use a system that screws into the side screws and allows this thing to get really tight and close. I think this is the tightest and closest mounting setup that you're gonna find uh, for your Scouts or your Protax. Inside of here, you can't really see it. It's a proprietary adjustable gas block uh, using a pretty unique system that allows a really, really good lockup and pretty much zero uh, gas to escape. It is a direct impingement gas system, which I like. I haven't really switched over to piston ARs. They just, I've had some friends that have them. I've had other people that have run them in courses and stuff, and they're just still always seem to have issues. I know obviously some of them are great and some of them can run good, but I am, I still like direct impingement just because it's simple and no nonsense. This is a direct impingement system, uh, which they like as well. The barrel, like I mentioned earlier, is 16 inches long. This is their little muzzle device, which is kind of a combo flash hider compensator type unit with these holes out here. Really beautiful little end piece, uh, but also, to note is these tapered threads. So that's how the official Q silencers work, is their direct thread onto the muzzle device, direct thread, I guess. Uh, direct threads usually used to refer direct threading onto the barrel threads. Uh, so this isn't really a direct thread, I guess, but it's a threaded muzzle device with tapered threads. So that means you tighten it, tighten it, tighten it, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Uh, really, really good, really secure lockup. Also means you don't have a big mess of quick detach levers and everything. I think it allows the system to be a little more uh, secure, a little better lockup, and also a little lighter. Obviously means you gotta thread it on, so it takes a little bit longer. I don't have any other suppressors, so I can't really speak to them, but they are really high quality, high quality devices. Uh, again, since I don't have one, I'm not gonna be speaking to it. Just speaking to the AR, and then yeah, I skipped over this, unrelated to the Honey Badger, but this is uh, my favorite mount, Scalar Work mounts with a Trijicon MRO on here, and that's pretty much the setup. I had zero issues with this thing. Again, I only ran a few hundred rounds through it. Shot some various supersonic and subsonic loads. Accuracy was great as you'd expect, though I didn't bench rest this thing and check out the MOA at 100 yards or anything like that uh, because I don't really do that much. So it ran well, it ran smooth, it ran nice. The only thing to note really for me is with, and this isn't unique to this stock, but a lot of these collapsible butt stocks, what you have here is this void. Uh, so if you, if your cheek rests right in here with your stance, you know, it might not. A lot of people it'll rest right here and it'll be fine. So if you're set up in a stance that's more very perpendicular to the target shoulders and you kind of have this more centralized in your chest, you're gonna find a void here where your cheek kind of just rests on these rails. Unless you lean way far forward, which you can, or if you're very aggressive down here, and you can. But that's just one thing to note with pretty much most collapsible stocks is you're gonna have a void here where your cheek is not gonna actually hit anything. I do also, for me personally, wish this was angled a little bit rather than pretty much perpendicular. Uh, pretty small nitpick. I do wish it had QD built right into the rail so then you wouldn't have to put this kind of system. Though I do really like adding a QD kind of angled right here like this because I think this, the sling hangs a little better uh, from that orientation than just directly out the side. And another very minor nitpick kind of is I do prefer the MOE K2 grips obviously. You can swap that out. But this is, I forget, the very small uh, Magpul grip. What I'm talking about is I like the MOE 
K2s because you get this bigger back strap. It adds a little bit of distance between the back of your grip and the trigger. So that's just a personal thing. Obviously, it takes a minute to swap that out if I wanted to pop in a Magpul gray also you can just this is just a factory magpul grip color so easy enough to get the gray so that's pretty much it i love the look of it i love the fact that the seven inch would be very small so this is a little bit of history i forget if i mentioned it earlier or not but this was really originally designed over at uh, aac i believe uh, kevin the ceo of q used to be at aac he's kind of got a long history in the suppressor business uh, originally de developed over there for socom as a replacement to the mp5 SD, so the short uh, suppressed version of the MP5. Uh, obviously with a more powerful 300 blackout cartridge, allows you to get short run, quieter subsonic rounds than the MP5, as well as supersonics, which obviously allow you to get a little bit more power and a little bit more distance. So that was the kind of original intention of this gun. You've probably seen it in video games like Call of Duty. It kind of got put on the back burner until Q was launched more recently and they picked this project back up and now it is available so this gun is a premium AR. I don't know if I can really call it an AR because it's, it's got some proprietary stuff, but we'll call it an AR. Uh, and it's about $2,000, I believe, for the unsuppressed version in all the different lengths. You can also get it in 5.56 if that's your jam. But really the short barrel, uh, the suppressed, and the 300 blackout really in my mind is kind of what makes this whole setup kind of unique or awesome. So personally, if it was me, I'd go for this gun in the short barreled uh, 300 blackout. But if longer barrels are your thing, you wanna reach out a little further, that is an option. If 5.56 is your thing, that is also an option. So that's it, the official Q Honey Badger, an awesome, slick, super lightweight, very compact little package that I can definitely recommend. Thanks again to Shooting Surplus for loaning this out to me. And yeah, if you have any questions about it, feel free to comment them down below. I'll try to answer them as best I can. If you're wondering also, I am, what I showed earlier in the video is this, this IC13 invert bandolier, which is a slick little system. I'll do a full review on it probably in the future. I am wearing, uh, you've probably seen this on Instagram because I feel like every, every Instagram operator has been wearing them, but these are the new Vertex Guardian shirts. They, I'm not gonna get into it, but they have like a little semi-compression layer. For those of you that wear collared plaid type shirts like this and wear an undershirt and carry concealed, then this is definitely a shirt that's worth looking into over at verdicts.com. I'll link to it down below. Again, my code LLOD saves you 25% off of everything over at verdicts.com. So thanks Verdex for getting me hooked up with that code for you guys. So what else? My Patreon is going. I had a goal set up for 200 patrons, which we smashed in like a day or two really. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I am doing giveaways over there for the 556 level. So every month on the first of the month, I'm gonna export all the people that were the 556 level so I can use them to randomly select a winner in the giveaway. I am also gonna do a live thing with my patrons to kind of do that giveaway and chat with you guys and answer questions. So definitely patron, patrons at every level are gonna get access to voting on where the money goes and all that stuff. Uh, anyways, yeah, I'll set up new goals over there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna try and jam patron, Patreon down your throat. So I just wanted to mention it because I was excited about it because a lot of people went and signed up for it. So it's a cool another outlet. I just made it, so I'm kind of getting used to the whole platform, but we will be doing giveaways over there. There's kind of rewards. There's, we're gonna do live streaming and stuff over there. So if you're into the channel a lot, even a $1 subscription will get you access to kind of my posts over there uh, and the live feed that I'm gonna be doing at least once a month. Well, again, if you had any questions, feel free to ask them down below, ask them. I was, I was gonna say answer them, ask them down below. You can answer them too if there's other questions down there. Hit that thumbs up button if you found this video helpful, entertaining, informative, or any of that stuff. Get subscribed to the channel. Also, turn on notifications. Hey, get involved. As always, I appreciate your comments down below. Let me know what gun of mine you'd like to see reviewed next, and maybe I'll do that, but maybe I'll do something else. But I do wanna hear from you about what guns you'd like to see. Like I said, gun content will continue on for YouTube. I think I'm safe there. So until next time, guys, take it easy. Also, I'm filming this on 
Easter, right about to go to Easter lunch. I won't upload it till after Easter, but happy Easter. Hope you guys had a great Easter. Uh, really the, the best, the best holiday of the year in my mind. All right, take it easy.